Hello everybody and welcome back to the multiplayer project where, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little bit fried right now. I've been racking my brain trying to solve one particular problem for, at this point, almost six hours. <laughs> it's uh, not been going well, but we're gonna put that in the to-dos and come back to that when I'm a little bit more fresh. So for now, let's just get caught up with what I've done and we are pretty much going to be doing deterministic game states and backtracking, although this is kind of almost changed, but it also kind of hasn't. So what we're going to do, I, I realize this is confusing, what we're going to do is we're going to hop into the server and we're going to make a few changes. I ha don't have anything open right now in the server project and that is by design. So for right now we're going to fire up the entity here. And in the entity there's a lot that we need to do. So let's go ahead and add ourselves in a couple more fields here. We'll do a private const int max log length and we'll set that equal to 100 because we need a log of all of the things that the entity was in the past, right? So we'll do a private read only list. This will be log element, which doesn't exist yet. And then we will do, I can get back on that line, tick log is what we'll call that, equals new list of type log element, which again, log element doesn't exist. So let's go implement that. I just put this at the bottom of entity. I might move it later on, but for right now, this is just down here, public class log element. And then all we need here is public date time timestamp we'll need public string name we'll need a public float movement speed and you know what i just realized maybe we will uh, run into the issue that's causing the problem that i was just talking about as i'm re-implementing this and maybe i'll figure it out who knows if not i'll come back to it later but for right now public vector 3 Position, rotation, scale, and desired position. Excellent. And then we'll just make a constructor here. Public log element. And this will take in a date time timestamp. This will take in a string name. This will take a float movement speed. This will take a vector 3 position. A vector 3 rotation. A vector 3 scale. And a vector 3 desired position. Excellent. And then all we'll do is we'll assign these in. So this dot timestamp equals timestamp. This dot name equals name. This dot movement speed equals movement speed. This dot position equals, oops, position equals position. This dot rotation equals rotation. This dot scale equals scale. This dot desired position equals desired position. Excellent. So that's all we need for our log element. And we can, in fact, just minimize that. Excellent. And that should recalculate this in a bit anyway. Non-generic type list cannot be used with type arguments. Um. Oh. Yeah, we need to use system.collections.generic. I assumed system.windows.documents. That can go away. I assumed that we already got that by default when I put in list, but apparently I did not, so we need system.collections.generic. Wonderful. Okay, now when we do on tick, I do want to make this log our position, which of course doesn't exist yet. So we will just put that in at the bottom over here. We'll do a private void log position. Or actually we'll we'll do we'll call it create log entry. Because I didn't I when I created that I was only planning on logging the position, but we're kind of logging everything. So we'll call this create log entry. Excellent. And when we do this, all we need to do is tick log dot add and then we'll add in new log element 
and that will simply take in datetime.now. It will take in name, movement speed, position, rotation, scale, and desired position. Excellent. And then we'll say if tick log, not tick lock, tick log. Did I call it tick lock up here? I did. That just goes to show how tired I am. <laughs> if tick log dot count is greater than or equal to max log length, then we'll just remove the oldest entry. Tick log dot remove at zero. Excellent. So now it will automatically, every time we tick, it will log it in, in this log, but it won't store more than 100 entries because we shouldn't, in theory, need more than that. Since we're doing 10 per second, 100 entries should be, uh, what, 10 seconds? Yeah, 10 seconds of data. So if, if we're lagging more than 10 seconds, maybe that's unplayable. <laughs> let's, uh, let's be real honest about that. So, what else are we going to need? Well, I would like to change the way that on tick is working because I want to make a more unified function. Actually, let me turn that down slightly. There we go. I want to make a more unified function for doing what this is doing here, wherein it can project a position towards a point, but do it without calling on tick. Because we're going to need to simulate that, right? So we can do public vector3 project. And that's just going to take vector3 from position. And then vector3 to position. And then float. Now, I called this seconds previously. I, I'm not super happy with calling it seconds. But I don't know what else to call it. I mean, I could call it something along the lines of, instead of seconds, it could be perhaps distance. But I kind of hate that too. We'll just call it seconds for right now. So we will say if our to position minus our from position dot length squared, and this is going to be pretty much exactly like it is up here, is greater than or equal to our movement speed. Although we're going to, we're going to do this a little bit more cleanly here. We're going to do math f dot pow. So we're going to take the movement speed times the seconds, and we're going to raise that to the second power. And we'll need a closing parenthesis there. So we'll just square this, and in theory, this should calculate, but I think it's freaking out because we're not returning anything currently, is my guess. Oh, it's because we're closing this parenthesis. That would do it. Okay, so in this case, this means that we are far enough away to take a full step towards the position, right? So we can just do return from position plus desired direction times movement speed times seconds. Excellent. Otherwise, then we just return to position. So it's pretty much like this. Excellent. So let's go ahead and redo on tick here. So if our position is not equal to our desired position, then we want to do project, or rather position equals, because this doesn't actually change our position because we might want to just calculate a projected position and not actually change it. So position equals project position desired position, not direction. And delta time is the distance that we're going to go here. Although that that's kind of the duration in... This isn't it in milliseconds. Delta time is 0.1f, so... A tenth of a second. Excellent. Okay, so that gives us our projection there. And then we need also to actually figure out where our position in the past is. So let's go ahead and open up our instance here. 
and down here we are calculating where the entry was in the past that many ticks ago and we need to set the position equal to that so we'll just do that real quick that's actually surprisingly easy now that we have the log so right here we will just go ahead and say realistically we don't even need this separate calculation here we're just going to say float ticks equals cast into float date time dot now minus timestamp dot total milliseconds divided by cast it into float game manager dot game speed excellent that gives us our number of ticks and then we can calculate where Entity was in the past that many ticks ago and project the new direction to before the next tick. Excellent. So we need to take entity.position and set that equal to entity entity dot project. We want to use this function again. And this is one of the reasons why we want to use exactly the same code here in hopes that this makes it actually work. Entity.position in past and we'll pass in casted to integer ticks. And we'll also do entity.desired position. And we'll also do mathf.floor we want to floor the ticks multiplied by entity dot delta time and delta time is not public currently so we're going to need to hop over into our entity and turn this to a public const float so that we can access this and you'll notice we accessed this with a type reference rather than an instance reference that's because it's a constant and of course, entity.position in past doesn't exist. So let's implement that really quick. So we'll do that right above project, I think. Public vector3 position in past. And we'll take in an integer ticks ago. Wonderful. And we have a record in this list right here of where we were every time a tick occurred, which is super useful. So we're going to go ahead and say if ticks ago equals zero and if I can find the and key, there we go, tick log dot count is greater than zero. So if if the tick that we're looking at is the very last tick and we have things in our log, then we want to return tick log dot last. Nope, not last index of, last dot position. And if it doesn't autofill your uh, usings, then we're going to need to hop up to the top here and do using system dot link. And now that last call should work. Wonderful. Now, of course, what if it's not equal to zero? What if it's equal to something else entirely? Then we need to check to see else if tick log dot count is greater than ticks ago then we can do return tick log and then we're going to use a handy dandy little operator here that i actually didn't know about until the compiler told me here i'll show you what i did first actually what i did first was tick log dot count minus ticks ago Dot position. That's what I did originally. And then I noticed these three little dots here where the, compil the compiler was just like, you know, you could probably do something a little bit better here. And I'm like, really? What are you talking about? And it's like, well, you could use the index operator. I didn't know this operator existed until then. <laughs> but I looked it up and the way this operator works is this just indicates that it is the last index minus ticks ago. So it's literally the same thing, just way easier to type out. I'll accept it. Otherwise, we're going to simply return our position. Because that's our fallback here. We know that there's we already know that there's nothing in the tick log. 
Actually, we don't know that, do we? Technically, we don't know that. But anyway, position is our fallback. But now that I think about it, else if ticklog.count is greater than zero, and then another else here. So let's go through our options here. If ticks ago equals zero, and we have something in our log, then we return the last thing in our log. Otherwise, if ticks ago can be subtracted from the end of the log, then we'll grab that. Otherwise, if that's not possible, we should return tick log zero if there's anything whatsoever in the log dot position. Otherwise, position will be our fallback. And this is a bad thing to return realistically, but that would be our fallback right there. I don't think this is going to fundamentally change anything having this statement in here, but who knows? We'll see. Maybe that's the thing I've been looking for for six hours. <laughs> Never can tell. Okay, what else do we need here? Is that it for Entity? I believe that might be it for Entity. So we're now able to grab our position in the past. And I believe that's also it for instance. Realistically. I mean, we can use the compiler here to tell us that we can turn this into read-only, and we'll do that. But, uh, sure. Okay, so let's hop over to the client code base now. And let me just hop over there in the other project. If I can get it open. There we go. And we're going to change a few different things here. Specifically, we are going to change our representation manager. There's a couple of things that we're going to do here. First off, I want to do public bool interpolate equals true. I want to be able to optionally interpolate. And I, I actually think that's almost the only thing that we're going to change here. But there's one more thing that we're going to do right down here. And that is entity entity equals, I'm just checking to make sure, yeah, I didn't change any of this, of course. The other thing that we need to do is we need to set a reference to our managers. So entity.managers equals managers. Now, of course, entity does not have that. So let's go ahead and pull open the entity script here. And this is where the majority of the changes this episode are going to be. So we're going to need to have a private boolean here, private bool project after equals false. Excellent. And we'll also do a right up top here, public managers, managers. Wonderful. That's all we need to do for our fields here. Our update is going to be changed slightly if managers.representationManager.interpolate, then we are going to Go ahead and set that inside of here. So we'll only do this interpolation. Oh my, that's slightly awkward. <laughs> we'll only do this interpolation if we are set to have it on. Wonderful. Now in the actual interpolate function here, we're going to basically do the same thing that we did on the server, and we're going to create ourselves a public vector3 project and this is going to be a vector3 from position, vector3 to position, and float seconds. Once again, I just want to make sure that we're doing things exactly the same or as close to it as possible without using things like vector3.move towards. So that's going to be a thing. And for project here, all we're going to do is we're going to do pretty much the same exact thing we did on the server, except it's going to be a little more Unity-ish and a little less C-sharp-ish. If we come over here, like there's some of these things in the project here that is simply not going to work, but that's okay. So we're going to say if, let's see, this should be, let me pull open the server one from the other project, actually, just so that I can compare it, because I feel like I changed a few things. Yeah, okay. So if to position 
minus from position dot this would be length squared but that's not how unity works of course for unity the term is square magnitude is greater than or equal to math f with a lowercase f dot pow and this works exactly the same way this will be movement speed times seconds and then we'll raise that to the second power closing parenthesis there and I feel like I missed, messed something up here. Yes, indeed, I did. No closing parenthesis there. Excellent. So if this is true, then we would simply return from position plus. This would be our desired direction, which we don't have. Times movement speed, lowercase m, because that's not property over here. And then times seconds. So desired direction doesn't exist. We'll come back to that. Otherwise, we're just going to return to position. So project is going to work identically. Now, how do we calculate desired direction? Well, we calculate that one by taking the relative position. And actually, let's just do... We'll only need to do a desired direction in this case. So we'll do it here and... We want to do that because this is going to be a, a square. A, actually, this is going to be a magnitude call. So that's a square root call, so it's kind of slow. So we want to avoid it whenever possible. So we're just going to say vector 3 desired direction equals the relative direction here. Desired direction. Or actually, this would be... Uh, this would be... to position, had to think about that for a moment, minus from position. There we go. And then we'll just take that and normalize it. So that's exactly what we did previously, where we divided it by its by its magnitude. It's the same thing. It's just Unity provides a shortcut for it. Wonderful. Okay, so that gets us our project there. Let me pull the other project back open real quick here. Wonderful. So our interpolate function here is largely going to be the same, except we're going to swap from doing vector3.move towards over to our project function. And that is, of course, going to be from transform.position to new position at the speed of time dot delta time, or I guess for the duration of time dot delta time. Excellent. So that'll get us projected. And then we also want to change in our update how this is working a little bit, I think. No, we absolutely do not. That's completely fine. We do want to change in our from UDP message though, because there's a couple of things that we want to do. First off, I want to set our last time up here. And I also want to reset project after to false here. And in the position here, Instead of setting our transform.position equals position, we'll just do project after equals true. Because we don't necessarily know what order these are coming in. We could get position first. We could get desired position first. We have no idea. So with that in mind, what we need to do is we need to wait until after we've processed all of these components in order to do any projection. So. Down here, we'll go ahead and say if project after, if expected time is less than last time, then we will go ahead and see how old this information is. We'll check our latency here, and we're going to do that by casting to a float managers.netmanager dot server time minus timestamp dot total seconds. We want this latency in seconds and we don't want to use the server or the uh, net manager's calculated latency because we're only interested in how old this exact message is. And that information in the server may act or rather in the net manager may actually be out of date by the time we're looking at this. So we will go ahead and do 
that to calculate our own latency. Now let's set this as our final position. Note, this is where things can go wrong. Okay, we'll do transform.position equals position at this point and project forward however much time it should be, which we calculated just above. So transform.position equals project transform.position desired position because we, at this point, hang on, if expected time is less than last time, Okay, so this is after we're expecting the server to have figured out what our next position is. So after we're expecting the server to set our desired position equal to our expected desired position. Wonderful. So we're going to interpolate from, or rather project from transform.position, which we just set to where the server just told us it was latency seconds ago. And we will do this latency times time dot delta time. Okay. Do we actually want to multiply? Hang on. Do we want to multiply this by delta time? We know how many seconds behind we are. That might be the problem. I'm going to comment this. and otherwise leave it here. And we'll see if that works. But that might be the cause of some of the desync that I'm seeing. Although, now that I think about it, this only happens after the desync should be done-ish? Well, no, maybe not. Anyway, we'll continue for now. So I believe that is everything that we need to do in the entity. So that should be fine. Now in the net manager, we need to do a little bit here. And one of the things that I want to do in the net manager is I want to introduce a pretty new feature for us here, and that is public int simulate latency. And we'll default that to 100. I figure that's kind of a standard in terms of MMO latency, like that's kind of high for like MOBA latency, but when you're playing something like World of Warcraft, that's about where it's at. So we'll simulate at about there. Excellent. And let's just see here, we need to do a little bit of work with our latency here. So we will serialize this field, but we're going to make the latency private because we want to use now public float capital L latency. And for that, we will just simply return latency plus simulate latency. And then private set. Excellent. We want to return this. Just goes to show how tired I am. Wonderful. Okay, so with that done, we can now hop down over this way a little bit to where we actually calculate our latency. I tried multiple ways to get our latency properly working, but uh, everything gave me exactly the same results, so that's a good sign. <laughs> but for now, we'll just go with this. And then for our actual latency calculation down here, this is, we're going to leave this pretty much exactly the same. Um, yeah, all of this actually. But right up here, when we parse the message, we're going to change this over to an async void. And we're going to then say, if simulate latency is greater than zero, then we are going to say await task.delay. And that is going to be for simulate latency over two milliseconds. The reason we're doing over two is because this is just half of the latency is receiving it. So let's just go ahead and copy that. I cut it accidentally, but let's go ahead and copy that. 
And then we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here. And we're going to change all of these sends over to asyncs. And actually, yeah, we're, we're going to do that. I'm just going to, I was going to copy them, but then I was like, hang on a moment. I can't do that. My clipboard is occupied. So we'll do this as async as well, and async. All of these will be async methods now. And most of the time, it's going to be no different. However, we do want to put in right about here, date time time equals server time. And then we will also put in the simulate latency. And let's just go ahead and copy that. And we're going to put that in right in front of client.send every time that occurs. So we'll do something like this. Because we've already simulated receiving the latency. But now we need to simulate sending it. And we need our timestamp to be before we have simulated our latency. So we then need to put time instead of server time in each of these locations. Excellent. So that should get us some simulated latency. And then in the input manager, there is one little thing that I want to change. And in here, down on line 85, we want to change player entity dot expected time equal to date time dot now dot add milliseconds. And we will then pass in managers dot net manager dot latency. Okay. Now, what am I forgetting? I am sure I am forgetting something. I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting something. That said, that's all of the things that we had open. So hopefully that should be pretty identical. Now there is one thing I would actually like to do. And in the input manager here, I actually want to open up the key binds. And we'll add in a region here, and we'll call this camera controls. And then we will do right here a header, and this is going to be camera. And then public keybind, and you want to put it, I, I, I specifically put it above this so that the header applies only to this keybind and not to all of these keybinds. So public keybind, this is going to be snap or rather public keybind lock camera. Excellent. And then in the actual camera over here, we will do something along the lines of, let's see here. Right in here is where we'll do it. If input dot, actually if, we need to do this slightly differently. Managers dot input manager dot keybinds dot lock camera dot held. Or actually, we'll do. Yeah, we'll do held. Then we'll simply do. Wow, I can't type apparently. Fingers were on the wrong keys. Locked equals true. And yeah, this is a method, so we'll need parentheses here. There we go. Locked equals true, else locked equals false. Wonderful. Now, when we actually spawn in that entity, we set it to be equivalent to our player entity there. And then the ARPG camera how does this get initially locked? It's automatically set to locked at first. Okay, so let's go in here and let's also turn down the zoom speed a little bit because that was a little extreme, but let's set this by default to not be locked. Okay, that's good. And the other thing is that the ARPG camera really shouldn't be scrollable 
at certain times, right? So let's go ahead and say public bool scroll locked equals true, actually. And then when we turn off, or rather when we enter the world, so when we get a CER message, right in here, when we succeed the login, we should say managers dot, hmm, what would this be under? Input? Representation? Where would we put the camera? I guess we would put it in representation dot camera, or rather we'll just call it dot cam equals, or rather dot scroll locked equals false. Okay. And then in here, we will say if not scroll locked, then that is when we would do all of our scrolling. That also gives us a handy feature of being able to just minimize our scroll section. Wonderful. Name camera direction does not exist in current context. Right. Because this needs to actually be outside of the if statement. There we go. Wonderful. So now it should no longer scroll around when we're on our login screen. <laughs> that would uh, that would be beneficial. So let's go ahead and set this up in the representation manager. And we will say public ARPG camera cam. Wonderful. And we'll hook it up in here. So our representation manager, as soon as we recompile, we've got a compiler error. Oh, we didn't end our region. That would help. Okay. We'll recompile this. The representation manager should default... I didn't async this one. There we go. <laughs> the representation manager should default to having interpolation on. And indeed it does. The net manager should default to 100... MS latency. Let's bump that up to 500 to feel the pain. And then the representation manager will need to give it a reference to the action camera, or to the ARPG camera rather. Excellent. So let's see if we've got any compiler issues with the server. We do not. Let's fire up the client. ASDF, ASDF. Wait for that sweet, sweet encryption handshake. One of these days it'll happen. There we go. Ooh, that felt laggy. <laughs> okay. Yep, that's definitely laggy. That feels a lot better on the scroll speed. There's no doubt about that. And then we tell it to go over there. Mm, that was a pretty big jump. Clearly I did something wrong because that is not what we were seeing before. But let's test the camera locking quick. Oh, we didn't set it up. <laughs> that would help. I'm going to do this out here quickly, but uh, we'll have to do it after we unpause as well. So we'll go into the input manager keybinds. And we will set the lock camera primary key to be equivalent to space. Okay. We are currently scroll locked. Hang on. No, we're not scroll locked. It just didn't untoggle. Did I... If we're holding it, it should be true. If we're not holding it, it should be false. I'm not holding it right now. Well, that's awkward. So you can see how we're jumping around quite a bit right now. 
and it's quite delayed from when I put in the input because that's our latency. So if we drop our latency simulation down to a simulated latency of zero, then you can see that that jerk happens far quicker. And it's this that I wanted to deal with and have been trying to deal with for a long time. Although I had it considerably better than this. Now, if, if I hadn't have just shut down the server, I could have pointed out if we turn off interpolation, it's just a problem with the interpolation. It works fine on the server. I do want to find out managers.inputmanager.keybinds.lockcamera.held locked equals true, locked equals false. So, did I mess something up here? Returns true while the user holds down the key. I don't believe I messed that up. Well, we'll go into our input manager here and into our keybinds and set this back up to be space. Okay. And now let's check our representation manager to see if I messed anything up in here. Let's see, this should be set to... Yeah, this shouldn't be anything. So we can close that. And then we've, if we open up the entity here, I may have forgotten to do something in here. So let's see here. If expected desired position is not equal to desired position, if expected time is greater than last time, we go to expected desired position. Otherwise, we interpolate to desired position and we set our expected desired position to desired position. Okay, fair enough. Otherwise, if we have our transform.position not equal to that, yeah, this is correct. I didn't change any of this, and in fact, we can probably just get rid of that. That's not, I think, strictly speaking, necessary. In the interpolate here, transform.position equals that. Yeah, this is all exactly the same. I didn't change anything there. I don't think I typoed anything in the projection here. I mean, I calculated it slightly differently. I calculated a relative position here, but all, all I did was inline that. That shouldn't really cause any difficulties. Although I suppose we could do vector three relative position equals two position minus from position. Again, that shouldn't be any issue. And then we'll just copy that and we'll put that right here. It's no longer inlined. And then we'll also put it here. I mean, I guess it does save us a calculation. I'm not sure a subtraction is worth it, but uh, that's fine. And then we can actually get rid of this allocation and inline that. I mean, sure. So that's now exactly the same. In the from UDP message here, that should be the same. Project after equals true. If project after, if expected time is less than last time. <laughs> okay. So I don't know what I messed up. Maybe it was on the server. I suppose that's a possibility. Let's see, our max log length and our tick log. Yep, those are marked as changed. In our on tick up here, if position is not equal to desired position, we projected in position desired position delta time, create log entry. Yep, that's all fine. Position in past. I suppose I did add this in. I guess we could remove it and see if that fixes the issue. And then project. Yep, that is the same. Log position, which of course I changed to create log entry. That's fine. Shouldn't be an issue there. And then in the instance, 
Let's just double check what we've got going on here. Static read only. Yeah, that's fine. And then all we changed was this right here. Which realistically should be exactly the same thing. Okay, let's fire up the server and see if that fixed either of those issues. I don't expect that the, uh, that the snapping issue will be entirely fixed, if I'm honest. You know what? I think I know what the keybind issue is. We'll see if, if it is in fact fixed. If not, that's going to be an interesting fix and I'll have to think about it for a moment. But I think I know what the issue there is. But we're just waiting on that sweet, sweet encryption handshake. There it is. Man, that's laggy. <laughs> Excellent. Exactly what we wanted. Okay, so yeah, that jerks ahead there. By a fair amount... I think we're being too generous with the lag compensation or something. Let's go ahead and pause it, though, and I want to turn off... I want to keep the latency, but I want to turn off the interpolation. Okay. So you, so you can see it takes a little while to get going, and then once it gets going, it is successfully compensating for the lag. But I'm not sure at this level of latency that we can really solve that without the interpolation kind of going a bit nuts. Realistically, it's jumping ahead though, isn't it? It is. It's quite a bit ahead of where it should be. That's definitely a problem. And actually, I want to test the camera quick. Yeah, that did not fix the problem. Let's jump it down to no latency real quick. And you can see it feels almost right. There's a little bit of jumping at the very beginning. And I think that's because we're overcompensating for the latency. Let's hop into the server real quick and see if I can find where that is. Because we're overcompensating here. It would be in ticks times entity dot delta time, I would th think. That said, there was that moment where we took this off. This time dot delta time. Let's see about that. And I do want to hop into Keybind here and talk a bit about why this is returning true. Or, or, or rather, why this is returning the way it is. So in the ARPG camera, the way this is coded right now is if if dot held returns true, then locked is true. Otherwise, locked is false. And realistically, we could we could simplify this pretty dramatically with simply locked equals that. Okay. So locked is now set equal to held. So if we go into our keybind here and we check out held, if mouse binding primary, no. So it checks if input.getKey primary return true. And it does return true when it's held. I wonder if just doing this would fix it. But uh, then it should, in theory, return false after we return that. Let's see if that fixes it. We'll fire up the server, and we'll see what that does to the jittering, too. Because like I said, that was more than I was experiencing before, and I think it might have had to do with the removal of that time.delta time. And yes, the latency does slow down the overall encryption handshake, but only by half a second. So yeah, you can see that's substantially slowed down. Okay. It's still doing a pretty good jerk ahead.
which it shouldn't really be doing. So we're clearly overcompensating for the latency. But overall, it doesn't feel terrible. And if we get that dialed in, that wouldn't be too bad. Let's go ahead and set our latency down to zero. And yeah, I think we're, we've got the same problem at zero latency. It's just less pronounced. I'm pretty sure that that's what's going on here. So we just need to dial down that latency compensation. And... Yeah, that definitely sets it equal to true, but it never comes off of true. I really have to wonder why that's happening. I might just be too fried right now to see it. That's likely the case, I would imagine. Keybinds.lockcamera.held. So if any of these are true, it returns true. So what if these are true? Like every frame that it's checking. Because it's checking this every frame. Hmm. I don't know. At any rate, I think we're going to call it there because I'm kind of fried. So I'm going to put in a known issue here where ARPG camera gets stuck in locked mode when space is released. It's probably a really, really simple thing that I'm just not seeing right now because I've been at this for too long. And then the other known issue is overcompensation of latency. I believe this is on server side. Because it jumps ahead when it's no longer expecting... Like, when it's expecting the server to be like, okay, there you go. When it's expecting the server to be caught up, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, we'll just say that that is done for right now. And let's see here, what is today? Today is a Thursday. That is fine. So the next episode... I think we're going to make it a bug fixes episode. Because this list is starting to become kind of big, as is this list. And actually, we did camera scrolling. We can get rid of that one. And we actually added in latency for determining if expected desired position is still valid or not. We can get rid of that too. Okay. So yeah, I think next episode is going to be some bug fixes, and we're going to work on some of these things. For now, though, you can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.